What's going on everybody? Aaron here with AV Astronomy. Welcome back and if this is your first time watching, thanks for stopping by. So I have spent the past couple weeks toying around with my new astronomy camera, the QHY165C. And it is a one-shot color camera. This is, you know, t a totally new territory for me. I don't have any experience with one-shot color cameras. And I got to tell you, in the past couple weeks here, just playing around with it, I thought, you know, what better video than to put something together that shows you guys how to use a one-shot color camera. There are some similarities if you've used a DSLR before, but there are some notable differences that you will beat your head against the wall on if you didn't know how to approach it or how to solve it. So uh, with that, I'm going to show you guys how to use a one-shot color camera. All right guys, so one of the first things you're gonna wanna do when you're starting out with a one-shot color camera is you're gonna wanna run a sensor analysis. Now, you don't have to do this. You can certainly just kinda play around with the settings and kinda figure things out, I guess, through trial and error, but save yourself the headache, save yourself the trouble. Run a sensor analysis on your new one-shot color camera. And I'm going to give you guys a brief overview of how to do that. SharpCap is an excellent program that offers that type of tool and it walks you through step by step on how to do it. So, first order of business, run a sensor analysis. So, after you've done your sensor analysis, you're going to have some data, okay? And with that data, we'll walk through and I'll, I'll show you what, um, what mine came up with to kind of give you a better understanding of how to use that data to get the most out of your camera. So with that, let's go jump on the computer. Okay, so let's get started on doing a sensor analysis with your one-shot color camera. Now, something that will help you in doing this is getting some sort of light source. This is an LED dimmable light panel that I got on Amazon for like 15 bucks. So totally worth it. It really makes this process a lot easier and it doesn't flicker. So you don't have to worry about that part being an issue with the calibration. So what we're going to do is load SharpCap to do this sensor analysis. All right, so let's connect, let's connect the camera. Go to cameras, choose your camera, connect. And um, the first thing I'm going to do here is go to the cooling. We don't need this thing to be super cold. So I've got it set at 13 degrees Celsius. That should be fine for the testing, for the sensor analysis. All right. so. Once you've got your, so what you'll do, just like when you're imaging, you'll hook up your one shot color camera to your laptop, to your laptop, okay? And you will follow the prompts here on the sensor analysis. You go to tools, sensor analysis, and it will tell you what you need there. Constant illumination source, low light levels. Let's, let's try this out. Let's go ahead and get this on here. I'm just going to take the cap off of, I'm just going to take the cap off of my camera. Get this on the light pad. All right. And then you hit start. Real simple here. It kind of walks you through it. If you find that your light source is too bright, and if you find that the light source is too bright and it's not, you're not getting anything on the histogram, you can add like a t-shirt or a thin uh, piece of a sheet, something of that nature to get the histogram reading it to about 65% from the left. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so now what we're going to do is proceed to the next step since we've got the histogram where it needs to be. And at this point, what the program is going to do is it's going to take a series of shots to calibrate the sensor bit depth. 
and then it's going to do the same thing for the dark current and the gain. It'll go through several different phases of testing before it finishes. Now, this took mine about an hour to hour and a half to do. Some people get it done much quicker, but regardless, it's only something you have to do one time, so it's worth putting in the time to get this done. So I'm gonna let this thing run, and there's really not a whole lot. You just follow the prompts of what it tells you to do. At some point, it'll tell you to take the camera off the light source, put the cap back on so it can do the dark current uh, testing, and then it'll tell you to take it back off for the final step and then when it's done you'll get a nice printout with the results so let's take a look at those now here is the results of my sensor analysis and one of the things that surprised me the most about this was that the fact that my dynamic range actually stayed the same all the way up to about 3,751 gain, uh, which was impressive. 3,000, actually 3,251, but still, uh, you don't lose any dynamic range for quite a while going up the, the gain uh, settings there. Now, generally what people try and shoot for is one E ADU, and mine is right around 3,751. However, that comes at the cost of dropping your full well down to 4298. And if you're not sure what that is, that essentially is, you know, visualized like a bucket collecting photons of light. Well, as that bucket fills up, it gets to a point where it cannot collect anymore and it just, it'll essentially blow out or clip that data that's coming in. So you want that to be as high as possible given the, your situation and settings you're going for. So for me, what is valuable about this is I know that with this camera, I can ha I have some flexibility with, with gain, given the dynamic range I'd be trying to achieve, given the dynamic range results. But I also, you know, I want noise, the read noise to be relatively low, but I want to have a good full well value. So I started with a thousand gain and the other part to this that was the most nebulous, confusing part was offset. There's, no, there's nothing in the instruction manual, on the company website, anything that talks about what offset value you should use for your camera with a given gain setting. And there's really not a whole lot of info online about this. So fortunately, I was able to come across a website, which I'll link in the description below, that does a pretty good job of explaining offset and how that relates to gain and why that's important. So that's what we're going to talk about next here. Before I do that, study your, your sensor analysis. Uh, and really all you need to know is gain is kind of like ISO. The higher the gain, just like with ISO on a DSLR, the more, uh, not sensitivity, but the brighter, essentially, it amplifies the results of the image. It doesn't increase the sensitivity, per se. And these are the values like the read noise, the full well, and the dynamic range. Those are the most important values there. So that's sensor analysis. And now we're going to move on to offset so we know how to pair that with the appropriate gain setting. So let's do that. So we're going to go back in the sharp cap and if you go to tools and histogram and take your exposure all this here we got to go back up you want your exposure all the way down to the shortest exposure possible for this, okay? And what you're looking for, you'll see here, you're looking for this peak of data and the distance it is from the left. You want it as far left as it can go without clipping the data, and it is okay to leave some space here. It doesn't really specify in that article how much, but generally you want this to the left. So, you just go through your gain settings, and right now it's at a gain of, it's at a gain of one and an offset of and an offset of 200, which is probably a bit much for a gain of one. So let's bring that back to 100. There we go. That's closer. 
and you still got a little bit of space there between the left side of the histogram and that peak. But let's say you wanted to do, you know, a gain of 2000. As you can see there, your offset value is okay, but you may want to pull it, pulled it over to the left some more, bump that up to about 200. And this is something you can kind of play with, but at least it prevents you from having no idea uh, because the offset can go all the way up to 2047 on my camera, which is obviously way too far from the left and you'd end up clipping data. So we, you know, even with the op gain of 2000 and offset of, you know, something between 200, 192, that looks pretty good there. So what I did is I made a little cheat sheet that had different gain values and offset values that paired with the gain value according to what we're trying to achieve here. So I hope that makes sense. It certainly helped me out and gave me at least a good starting point with gain and offset settings when imaging. So now that we've done this, let's go take a look at actually pulling up this camera in APT and running through a couple of things that may stump, stump you a little bit, but is really not that bad. So let's do that next. All right. So you'll go to connect camera. The first time you do this, it's automatically connecting, but the first time you're gonna to have to specify that you're choosing a CMOS or one shot color, it's in there as an option, and then you'll connect. You'll set your cooling temp. Okay, so now that you've got your camera down to cooling temp, we're gonna look at focusing. And if you go to the tab here, drop down box, you'll see there's a test focusing tab. So, what this does is it helps you set up a series of shots that help you focus. You know, typically you would use a live view with a DSLR, which I know is nicer, but this really isn't that much of a difference, but it is something worth noting. So once you start these series of shots, you'll adjust focus as needed until you get it kind of close, then throw on that Batnov mask and get it refined. You got a nice sharp image. Now, once you've done that, it's pretty much business as usual. You'll, you know, at this point you will have polar aligned your mount and done your plate solving. I've got a video on that if you're not sure how to do that on how to plate solve using APT, but it's, it works the same way. You'll take a picture in APT. You can even use, I've even used the photos from the test focusing. It works really well. That's one thing I've noticed between the DSLR and my one shot color camera is APT's the, uh, the point craft tool, which is right here for plate solving, sorry, which is right here for plate solving, is far more accurate and a lot quicker with the one shot color camera. I'm not sure why, but it's made life a lot easier. So on that note, it's, it's been a vast improvement. So aside from that, it's, it's pretty much business as usual. Um, set your imaging plan, just as you would normally in APT and you know you go to edit and change the values accordingly and that's really about it as far as getting your sensor analysis done so you know what settings to use how to hook it up to your laptop how to connect it with APT get it cooled get it focused and you're ready to go so that about wraps up the tutorial on how to set up and use your one shot color camera. If you have questions, further questions about this process, let me know, shoot them in the comments. I'll do the best I can to answer those for you. Also, if you want more detail on plate solving, I do have a tutorial and I'll put a link in the description so you can go to that. Guys also want to thank you as always for watching and if you are interested in any of the gear that I use or recommend, I've got some links down below to OPT telescopes. Excellent resource for all of your telescope and imaging needs. And I'll put those in the description below. Guys, if you found the video helpful, useful, you got something out of it, and I hope, I hope you did. I hope it makes your uh, life a little bit easier when setting up your one-shot color camera for the first time. Give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe. And guys, as always, thank you for watching. Keep on looking up. Keep on seeking. God bless. And until next time, clear skies. Happy Thanksgiving.